Have you ever felt that the whole world is against you? Unless you are a big fan of the alchemist and believe in that false notion that the universe conspires to help you achieve something that you want, you are most likely to be among the majority who at times believe that the universe is against us than with us. Let us come back to this after the intro. Have you faced any of the following situations in your life at some point? A coin or a nail when dropped will roll to the least accessible corner. If you change queues at a supermarket or traffic lanes, the one you were in will always move faster than the one you are in now. The probability of meeting someone you know increases dramatically when you are with someone you don't want to be seen with. As soon as you sit down to a cup of hot coffee, your boss will ask you to do something which will last until the coffee is cold. When you are in a hurry and you are waiting for the bus and instead of your bus, you will get more buses going towards a different route or towards the opposite direction that you want to go. When you try and write down something, say a phone number from a person who is dictating the same over phone, the pen would fail to write. If you are a person who has to cross a railway cross, it would be shut every time you reach it. You are waiting for that repairman from Urban Club or somewhere. You wait for the whole day, yet he would ring the bell when you have just entered the washroom to take a shower. And the telephone invariably rings when you are in the shower. Always. Also, if you lied to your boss, you were late for work because you had a flat tire, the very next morning you will have a flat tire. Do you want any more reasons to believe that the world is against you? These are instances which has happened with all of us, correct? So is the world really against you? If anything would go wrong, it will, is the age-old adage that we are all familiar with. This is also called the Murphy's Law. Some people call this a superstition. But is it a superstition? That is what we are going to find out today. And by the way, who is this Murphy who discovered this law? No one knows. There are no confirmed evidence about there being a Mr. Murphy on whose head an apple fell which led him to state that if something has to go wrong, it will. We need to understand two things before we go into Murphy's Law in detail. Selective memory and probability. Let's take selective memory first. We witness a huge number of events in our daily life every single day, day after day. Some you remember, some you forget, some continues to stick in your memory for a long time and some of them you forget in an instant. So these kind of selection happens without our conscious knowledge every single day. Let's take a couple of examples to understand this better. Suppose you are waiting for a bus. You have been waiting for around 15 minutes and you are getting a bit frustrated. Then you see buses going in the opposite direction or to a different destination. They get recorded in your memory and you start counting them. This would get you more frustrated and this sticks in your memory. Now consider the opposite of this. You come to the bus stop and immediately a bus comes which is for your destination. You get in and as everyone does these days, you open your mobile and you do your own thing. You are not going to notice how many buses are now going in the opposite direction or how many buses are behind you. Hence you won't be counting those. So in effect, you would be remembering only those instances where you have stood waiting at a bus stop and you have counted buses going in the opposite direction. This is called selective memory that each one of us record in our brains. If you actually see, 
This is actually true in all examples that I stated earlier. For example, look at number six. This is a very common occurrence in all our lives. If you now pause this video and look back, I am sure you will remember many instances where someone has called and asked you to write a number and the pen has failed to write. You may have cursed the pen and perhaps flung it in anger. Your brain has recorded this. However, it is conveniently forgotten the many number of times that the pen has worked because your focus then is on the number. Let us look at another example, standing in the queue. Nobody likes to stand in queues. You can spend hours shopping, but you can't spend two minutes standing in a queue to build the products that you want to buy. And for all people who have stood in queues, you would remember that all other lines except yours seem to move faster. If you shift to another lane, then the lanes automatically goes into a time warp and you experience what Einstein called as time dilation. Here, we need to understand something called as probability. I'm sure you have all studied this in school. Now is the time to apply it. If there is a 100% chance of something happening, then you say its probability is 1. If there is no chance of something existing or happening, then the probability is 0. Almost all of the things in nature either exist between the 0 and 1. One of the first things you learn in school when studying probability is the coin toss experiment. When you toss a coin, we say the probability is 50-50. Why? Let's see. Generally, when you toss a coin, you have two possibilities. Please don't get confused between the words possibilities and probabilities. They mean two different things. So when you toss a coin, it can fall facing head or it can land tails. There could be other possibilities such as it could land on its side. However, we won't consider that as it is highly improbable unless you're tossing the coin on a beach. So since there are two possibilities, heads or tails. So out of the two possibilities, the probability of a head or tail falling is one out of two or one by two. Let us take another example. Let us take a dice. It has six faces. So six possibilities. The chances of us getting any of the six numbers is correct. One by six or 16%. One possibility out of the total six possibilities. Now, if two faces of the cube had the same number, the chances of that number falling is two chances out of six possible chances, which is two by six or one by three or 33%. I think now you have got the idea, correct? So now consider you are out for shopping. For ease of division, let us assume that there are 10 queues, all of different sizes. Which one would you pick? Of course, the smallest one, right? However, you also need to consider that everyone else who comes to the billing counter too chooses a queue exactly on that logic. So, on an average, each queue will be of similar lengths, give or take a couple. For the sake of generalization, let us assume that all queues are of the same length here. So you go, and stand in one of the queue. Now, let us take the probability of you reaching the cashier first. As seen in the earlier example of the coin toss and the example of the dice, the probability is one out of 10, right? One possibility out of 10 possible scenarios. So your chance is one by 10 or 10%. Perfect. Now, here is what most people miss. What is the chance of any other queue finishing first? There are nine more queues out of a possible 10. Now, what is the probability that any of those queues finish first, nine by 10 or 90%? So your probability of reaching the cashier first is 10% and the probability of another queue finishing is 90%. Now that's a huge difference. Hence, the probability of another queue finishing before yours is nine times as more 
probable and this is why you feel that your queue is taking a longer time you are fighting against much much higher odds and this is the science behind every one of those situations where we assume that the world is conspiring against us consider your possibilities and compare it against all other possibilities you may find that in many situations when you have made a choice and the probability of that happening may be much smaller when compared to the probability of something happening against your choice so before you start to think that the universe is thinking for or against your wants remember these two reasons why murphy's law works selective memory and probability so the next time you are in a queue you now have something to think about until you hear next please